This forest holds about 2.5% of the world's biodiversity. So we are here in the Osa Peninsula, located on the southern tip of Costa Rica, especially in a very, very interesting and magical place called Corcovado. Corcovado holds 2.5% of the world's biodiversity, and the Osa Peninsula in general preserves the last remaining tropical, very humid rainforest on the Pacific side of Central America meaning that no other country in Central America protects this type of forest, which is one of the most biodiverse ecosystems that we have on the planet. My name is Ivigenia Garita Canet. I'm a tropical biologist and conservationist living here in the peninsula for 18 years. Since then, I've been working uh, hard to support the local people through tourism through a project called Osa Wild. It all started a long time ago when I first discovered that there's so many people in this area selling our land. And I felt a lot of pain when I saw that lots of land was being sold to people that are not uh, from Costa Rica. And this made me think that I had to find a way to support the local people and make them understand that their land is more important than the money that they will get from selling their land. And that's how we started promoting community-based tourism projects, projects that are run by local people, run by, by their families, without the need of selling their land. So through all this time, we have worked with people uh, like Eduardo, who has a project called Ecoturistico La Tarde. And Eduardo comes from an interesting background from being a hunter. And now he's a guy that has started to understand how important nature is to him and for the travelers that are coming from around the world to this incredible region. He has now a different vision of what an animal is from what a snake is, from what conservation is. Uh, he has done a big mindset change and that's what we really want from local people to understand that it's, it's very important to keep nature. People come here to see nature. And one of the most beautiful things about this area is that people have uh, lots of beautiful things to share with. Las serpientes para mí eran como el peor enemigo que teníamos acá en el bosque, ¿verdad? Este, normalmente ningún campesino quiere las serpientes. Todavía no había un proyecto de, de serpientes, de cómo protegerlas, porque eran interesantes. Y hay unos años se, se dio este, el proyecto de, de, del estudio con la Busmaster. Hicimos grupos, hicimos grupos de 15 personas en la comunidad, todos empeñados en ir a buscar esta serpiente, el Busmaster, ¿verdad? La número uno de las diez más venenosas de Costa Rica. Sí. Después de tres años de, de hablar con la gente, de que si tienen la oportunidad de ver una serpiente de estas, que por favor no la maten, porque es una serpiente muy difícil de encontrar, la verdad. De repente alguien me dice, mira Eduardo, este, bueno, caminé en tal parte y maté esta serpiente. Creo que era como una plato negro, un busmaster y tengo fotografías de esto. Y me dice, bueno, voy a enseñarle esta fotografía de esta serpiente a ver qué dice usted. Lamentablemente, esta persona había matado una de las serpientes que teníamos tres años de buscar nosotros. Entonces, bueno, era la oportunidad para explicarle a esta persona lo importante de proteger este animal, ¿verdad? Esta persona que había matado una serpiente como esta eh, nos llama de repente un día como a las 10 de la noche. Mira Eduardo, tengo una serpiente por acá en, en la calle. Yo creo que es lo que ustedes buscan. Este, vengan para, para que se den cuenta si es esta serpiente, ¿verdad? 
nos fuimos como a las 9 de la noche y en realidad lo que tenía ahí era una serpiente de estas plato negro, ¿verdad? Nosotros la rescatamos de, de ese sitio, la reubicamos y después de esto pues se dio este bloquera de que muchos visitantes para ver esta serpiente. Sí, esto fue por un tiempo de tres meses donde entrábamos todos los días al bosque tal vez 10, 15 personas para la observación del Busmaster. Explicarle la razón por qué eran importantes, ¿verdad? Sí. Ahí fue donde nació la idea mía de reunirme con la comunidad y ofrecerle pagar 10 dólares por serpiente. Serpientes que iban a aparecer en lugares como cultivos de cacao, cultivos de bananos y cosas así, que normalmente un campesino pues lo va a matar, ¿verdad? En este caso, bueno, yo les ofrecí pagar los 10 dólares para que ellos no las maten, esas serpientes que aparecen en, en estos cultivos, ellos me las traen acá a mí, yo les pago su dinero. Yo lo que hago con estas serpientes es reubicarlas, ¿verdad? Las vamos a ubicar en un punto donde no vayan a tener peligro de que lleguen personas a matarlas y, y el proyecto va a seguir adelante por muchos años, ¿verdad? Ahí nos dimos cuenta que Protegerlas es importante, ¿verdad? porque tenemos muchas personas interesadas en venirles a, a ver, ¿verdad? It is important to know that Corcovado is a park that was created more than 40 years ago and it preserves some primary forest, very beautiful primary forest and also some secondary forest. Secondary forest meaning forest that has been cut and interfered but now it's coming back again and it's allowing most of the wildlife to be seen by the travelers from the world who visit Corcovado National Park. It is said that it's one of the most intense uh, biological places on earth one of the few places where you can come and fairly easily see some of the most endangered species that we have here in, in the country. Big mammals like tapirs, we have uh, jaguars, pumas, ocelots, jaguarundis are found in this area and actually there have been some research specifically trying to find all these different species that we have. We, we have the the longest uh, record jaguar uh, living in, in Corcovado with some tramp cameras, a, a project done by the government. And there's also incredible amounts of spider monkeys, which are indicators of health of a good forest. And we have the big packs of wild boars or white-lipped peccaries that are only found in this area of Costa Rica in big numbers. And it also has uh, done a great job in promoting how people and nature can work together through a national park and through the idea of making tourism an alternative of another sustainable way of living in harmony with nature and, and people. So here in the jungle, everything is connected. Every species is connected to one another and everything depends on that whole connection and, and the whole community being healthy. Well, my name is Luis Daniel. I was born and raised in the Central Valley of Costa Rica. As, as a Costa Rican, I was lucky enough to always be in close contact to nature since I was a a little kid. I ended up studying software engineering. Well, I was working in that for several years until I noticed that I was like separating from nature too much and I wanted to, to get back to, to that. So I just decided to quit and I left my job. I left the Central Valley and I came to the Osa Peninsula and I started studying nature with the local people, learning from other guides, learning from the rangers, and just from the forest itself. 
and also learning a bit more of our relationship to, to nature and how we can give back to, to nature, right? They, uh, the forest gives us so much and sometimes uh, we, we should be giving more back to the, to the forest. We like to encourage people, especially young people, to become guardians of, of the forest that surrounds us. There are opportunities to work along with nature and make a living out of protecting the forest and just basically sharing with the world what we are lucky enough to have here. Every ecosystem has a component that depends on each other. For example, there's a hummingbird that needs from a heliconia and there's an ant that needs from a tree. And this has been all these evolutionary uh, traits and changes that are happening nowadays and surviving nowadays. So all of what we're looking at has been going through many, many different um, adaptations, and natural selection to get to this beautiful uh, ecosystem that is extremely fragile. So protecting our nature, especially a place that holds so much biodiversity, it's very important that uh, humans living here and, and the communities understand how valuable nature is for, for this environment. We as, as humans need to be included as part of our ecosystem and we have to do no harm to it. We need to understand that we're working in a way of promoting ecotourism as a way where people and nature can work together. So it is extremely necessary for us to respect and understand every single individual and every single species that we find in these tropical rainforests.